I didn't actually hear about Gary Brecka until you two mentioned him. And both of your dads sent you these clips, right? Or the first one we're going to be diving into. I think that was the case. Yeah, yeah individually. I- they both individually <laughs> sent us these clips, which is really interesting. <laughs> Well, and it, it fits the theme that I've noticed that there are certain very vocal, yep. very confident speakers. They're describing things that maybe are blatantly wrong, which we'll get into shortly. But uh, yeah, I'm excited to to dive into this one because this is a big deal. I think a lot of people are woke to the fact that thyroid is so critical for our metabolic health. And then you get people that are, I mean, popularizing longevity and cellular healing, but maybe making claims that are absolutely not in alignment with physiology. So from around the internet. Hashimoto's thyroiditis. I'm going to teach you more in the next 60 seconds about the thyroid than most board certified endocrinologists know. I call it Hashimoto's nonsense, pushing thyroid medication. You want to talk about a pandemic in this country? We have a pandemic of medicating organs in the body that have done nothing wrong. Thyroid gland is right here in the neck. It produces two hormones. It produces T4, and it produces something called T3. Only here's the little known secret about the thyroid. It only produces 20% of this hormone of T3. But wait a second, we're diagnosing hypothyroid, but it's only responsible for 20% of the thyroid in my bloodstream. So the question is, where does the rest of it come from? Where does the 80% come from? It comes from T4. It's methylated. This doesn't even happen in the thyroid. Yet when it's low, we medicate the thyroid. The only guarantee if you're on thyroid medication is that your dosage will increase. Okay, I think that's a great stopping point. Wow, I can only take small doses without feeling like my adrenaline is is really getting high. But anyways, uh, Jay... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> let's have you start here. Let's let's bring it back to basics for our listeners that might be uh, feeling overwhelmed right now with not knowing who to believe or what is actually happening when it, when it comes to their thyroid function and conversion. Yeah. And even, I mean, kind of zooming out to the, just what we're seeing here as the presentation, this immediate appeal to authority of, you know, this is more than, you know, any board certified endocrinologist knows or most know whatever it is. And it's just this super high energy, like kind of scammy sales pitch energy. And it's so fascinating that this was something that moved so many people, as we said, maybe kind of in our parents' generation, they found it so compelling that, you know, they're sharing it with, with other people and like the health people they know, and these aren't like health oriented individuals. Um, but obviously it shows the kinds of things that really sell and work. And, you know, we'll talk about this with the methylation and, and, um, you know, Gary sells products that are specifically oriented toward that, which I think is part of where, where this all comes from. But yeah, it's, it's coming back to something that we talk about a lot as far as why we want to break down these kinds of clips and actually evaluate the kinds of things people are saying is it's because the vast majority of people, I think, take these things at face value. And it's really unfortunate that somebody can just do this and get millions of views when they're sharing the kind of information that's being shared here. That's objectively, I think even I, just by all accounts, just not accurate. And I, I bet if we sat down with Gary, he would say the same thing. I, I mean, I don't know how he could get around it, but just to get into some of the details, I mean, of course, it's great to recognize that we are like in in the conventional medical system. There's medicating organs and like treating lab values, treating individual like downstream outcomes instead of treating root causes. And I think that's something that you know the, he got the big applause break for it. <laughs> but you know it's 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 a great concept right that that's something i think we all agree with but then to go on you know he talks about how the t3 is the active thyroid hormone and yet most of that's not produced uh, at the thyroid and instead it's converted elsewhere from t4 and that's great really important con- consideration it's not considered in the mainstream medical view and is a huge huge factor when it comes to thyroid function and instead what's often hap- what often happens is someone is given T4 and they probably are having con- uh, conversion issues they're probably not affecting or effectively converting the inactive T4 to the active T3 yet they're given T4 it makes their lab work look okay they don't feel any better but they're sent on their way and and they say your thyroid's fine and it's great to acknowledge that that's not a good approach and it's not actually fixing the underlying issue it's not even properly band-aiding this problem because you're not actually getting the active thyroid hormone 
However, there are some like there, there's some real just inaccurate things here that he says. And the first one is just that T4 to T3 conversion. He says it happens via methylation. And it doesn't. Even though he wrote it on the whiteboard, it still does not happen via methylation. And I don't know how it's crazy to me. It's so crazy because it's it's not controversial. There's no like dis- d- discrepancy about this. It's the methylation has nothing to do with what happens to the conversion from T4 to T3. Instead, it's a process called deiodination, where you basically remove an iodine from the T4 to to get to T3. And methylation is a process of adding methyl groups, which is you know a carbon with the three hydrogens. And that doesn't happen. It doesn't happen when going from T4 to T3. So it, it just it just blatantly doesn't happen. And you could maybe draw a real indirect relationship between the two because a lot of T4 to T3 conversion happens in the liver. And so if your liver is dysfunctional and it's not effectively methylating, like the methylation cycle isn't working well, then it could also be a state where maybe you're not effectively converting T4 to T3 well. But again, that's kind of a stretch and just, just bla- it's still just blatantly incorrect. Like T4 to T3 conversion is not methylation dependent. And yeah, so I mean, that's that's the first and most important thing. Um, there's a lot of things that do affect this conversion that are important to talk about that obviously are not going to get covered, which is, again, a real disservice here because in the process of saying, hey, if you have thyroid issues, it's a methylation issue, buy my methylation product. Not only is that not going to help, but then you're also steering people away from recognizing the real issues that can cause problems with methylation and there are certain nutrients that are involved but it's not you know methylated b vitamins it's things like zinc and selenium and iron vitamin a vitamin e those are all involved with the conversion from t4 to t3 but in general the main thing that's going to inhibit that conversion is the stress hormones glucagon and cortisol in particular are really good at blocking that conversion from t4 to t3 and so if we're not eating enough if we're stressed to our due to our environment if we're over exercising if we're not getting enough sleep, all of those things will interfere with that conversion. Uh, carbohydrate intake is really important here. If we're getting enough carbs, it really helps support the conversion of T4 to T3. And there's a direct kind of correlation of a linear relationship here with the amount of carbs coming in and how effectively you convert T4 to T3. So if you're on a low-carb diet, that'll cause uh, issues with the conversion from, from T4 to T3. You know, So you won't have the active T3. Any inflammation at the liver will interfere with the conversion. Polyunsaturated fats, omega 6s and 3s, are really good at interfering with the conversion. So it's a really important part of the thyroid picture to discuss, but he really doesn't have it right here. Yeah, the delivery is impressive. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, I'd love to have you weigh in on this. What was your reaction when your dad sent this to you? Sorry, dad. <laughs> no, no shame or judgment. I mean, it's convincing, right? That's part of, like Jay mentioned, that's part of the problem. It's like kind of thrown at us. But yeah, when when you receive this from your dad, what, what was your reaction? My immediate reaction was I sent him an emoji that was a face palm because the guy starts off this presentation. He has such conviction. And it's like, I'm going to share more with you than your board certified endocrinologist knows and then proceeds to get the physiology wrong. So it's like any board certified en- endocrinologist or anybody with a hint of understanding of thyroid physiology just facepalm themselves like when they watch this or is just shaking their head. It's like, what is this guy talking about? Because it, as Jay pointed out, I guess there's a, there's a couple flaws in this thinking in his thinking here. Um, one of the major ones, and it's like, it's weird that he chose methylation because it's like not even remotely discussed as the way that you activate thyroxine, which is T4, into tri- triiodothyronine, which is T3. Um, it's via removing one iodine molecule off of one of the tyrosine residues. So basically, it's like he's not even close. Like, and it, it's, I'm not even going to wax like what motivation is here that whatever it is, I know they do the whole methylation protocol and whatever else, like, sure. But it's just, it's like blatantly incorrect, as especially to like then like write it down. So that was that was the first thing. But the other thing that that Gary goes on here, and keep in mind this is in the context of Hashimoto's. So what what goes on in Hashimoto's? We have an autoimmune attack on particularly the, on the thyroid gland, but particularly the TPO enzyme, which is thyroid peroxidase. And so the TPO enzyme is involved in taking iodine, creating an oxidative reaction involving hydrogen peroxide, and adding it to the tyrosine residues that are present on thyroglobulin. So it creates a potent oxidative stress reaction. And the thing is, is that if 
this and if if you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis and thyroid function is being lowered by these by the autoimmune response or we'll talk I'll we'll talk about that in just a bit then not only is the 20% of T3 that's going to be lower it is going to be lower the T4 that is also produced by the thyroid even though only 20% is of the T3 is produced by the thyroid all the other T4 that Gary's pointing out that then gets converted to T3 is also produced by the thyroid so whether or not like the thyroid produces only 20% of the T3 is irrelevant because it's also producing the T4 that gets converted to the T3. So if you have this problem, your overall thyroid function will be low across the board. Like, and, and you'll see that. Now, does that then mean, as Jay pointed out, that treating with just T4 is optimal therapy? That is standard therapy and there's problems with it. But even with that, the endocrinologist is not really treating based on a T4 value. They are typically treating based on a TSH value and looking for suppression versus elevation in the TSH value, right? So and we're going to see if TSH is high and they'll use T4 to suppress it. Again, there's some problems with this, as as Jay pointed out, because it the active hormone, which Gary kind of alludes to, but I don't even know if he was alluding to it in the sense that this was uh that this was an an active hormone or not. Um the major thing is that the <laughs> like that you you don't want to just use T4 only therapy by itself. You'd you'd and that that's even tangential here. The the fundamental thing is that the thyroid is going to produce both T3 and T4. So it's weird to just hone in on, oh, only 20% of this is produced by the 20% of the T3 is produced by the thyroid. All of it will be low across the board. And on top of that, the T4 to T3 is not being methylated. It's being deiodinated. So the combination of these things in the context of Hashimoto's, which we'll get to in a second, just gets a little bit weird. Like it, it's it's a weird take. Um, especially when you, when you, we talk about like what is actually going on in Hashimoto's with the effect on the TPO enzyme. Let's, let's give them some more air time just to bump our adrenaline up again. That's the only guarantee. Why? Because you are killing the thyroid. Eventually it succeeds in completely beating the thyroid into submission. And now you are permanently reliant on levothyroxine, synthroid, armor, or, an, or a natural dissected thyroid. But if we understood that T4 is converted into T3 by the process called methylation, and that is, that is the suite of B vitamins, pyridoxine, riboflavin, thiamine, niacin, and panathenic acid, and if we put those back into the human body, it can start to perform this function again, and the thyroid disease goes away. People say it all the time, Gary, you cured my thyroid. I said, no, I didn't. There was nothing wrong with your thyroid. I fixed how your body uses the raw material. This is what 10X Health does. We fix people by empowering the human body to do what it does best. I promise you this, there is no better hormone in the human body than when you produce yourself. So if I buy his methylated vitamins, I won't have any issues with my thyroid anymore. Is that correct, Jay? <laughs> obviously, obviously so. That's what they do. <laughs> um, interestingly, he didn't even mention, you know, of the B vitamins he mentioned, none of them were actually the methylated ones, although pretty sure he sells uh, methylated B vitamin supplements that have the the methylated Bs, you know, folate and, and B12. But yeah, so I mean, there's there's a few different things he mentions here. Obviously, the biggest one being that this idea that taking the thyroid medications, like the exogenous thyroid hormones, kills the thyroid. You're constantly damaging the thyroid gland. And so for that reason, that's why you have to continually increase the dose and you know it's just going to continue to cause more and more negative effects but there's a, a couple of glaring issues there some glaring problems the first one being that the thyroid hormones that someone is taking exogenously whether it's synthetic t3 synthetic t4 or a desiccated thyroid are the exact same hormones as your thyroid produces so if those thyroid hormones kill your thyroid then so would the thyroid hormones that a healthy person's thyroid produces you know, like a healthy person would just be constantly damaging and damaging their own thyroid gland just from its normal function, which is just a ludicrous idea, just crazy to be suggesting that. Um, but then along with that, you know, we're talking about a situation, as Mike pointed out, where the thyroid gland is not producing enough T4 or T3, and there are likely conversion issues too. And you're suggesting to people that replacing those thyroid hormones is going to be making them worse. And we don't disagree that you need to work on the root of the issue. You need to sort out why you're in an autoimmune state, what kinds of things could be contributing to that. Why do you have T4 to T3 conversion issues? But to suggest to people not to provide thyroid hormones could be really dangerous. I mean, 
a hypothyroid state comes with a lot of negatives and not only in terms of risk of other disease processes, you know, uh, risk of digestive issues and cardiovascular issues and things like that, uh, but also, you know, depression and tons of symptoms, you know, low energy and fatigue and low libido and has a massive effect downstream on other reproductive hormones. So to suggest to people that the hormones that they're taking to help bridge the gap of, you know, that's, that's there due to some underlying issue, uh, to suggest to people that they shouldn't be taking those, I think is, is really dangerous. Now, there is a point to what he was saying, which is that in the people who are normally using exogenous thyroid hormones, they do often have to increase their dose over time. And that isn't necessarily ideal. It's not necessarily a problem, but typically what's happening is we're not addressing the underlying state. We're not addressing what led us to this issue in the first place. So the issue continues to compound. It continues to worsen and your thyroid is producing less and less thyroid hormone. So yeah, you do end up in that case needing more and more to be in a kind of you thyroid state, a normal thyroid state. Of course, our goal would not be to do that. Our goal would be to fix the underlying state. Um, but again, the, the fact that that's happening is not due to the thyroid hormones themselves. If you enjoyed that clip, you'll definitely want to download the free energy balance food guide. The energy balance food guide will help you determine exactly what to eat to optimally support your metabolism and help you lose weight, improve your digestion, get amazing sleep, boost your energy, and so much more. The food guide makes it extremely easy to get started with a bioenergetic approach to optimizing your health. So head over to jfeldmanwellness.com slash guide to download your free energy balance food guide.